Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Countless questions continue to be asked about last month's terror attacks in Paris. Tonight, with the testimony of six survivors, we will answer some of the most harrowing. What was it like to be one of the 1,500 people inside the Bataclan concert hall as three gunmen unleashed the carnage that would ultimately leave 90 fellow concert goers dead? How did it feel to lie terrified and injured among the bodies of the fallen just inches from a gunman's boots? And how does one even begin to recover from such a bloody experience? Please be warned. Much of this remarkable film by Newsnight's Warwick Harrington is deeply disturbing. It had been Katie's birthday three weeks previous and I decided it would be a nice, kind of, just a little romantic getaway. It's um, one of the, the most uh, mythic musicals in, in Paris. We were thinking we would have the best, one of the best nights of our lives. We've seen Jesse uh, standing there, so we asked him if he was uh, okay for pictures, and he said, of course. And yeah, he did say to us, uh, for you babies tonight, I will um, rock this place. And, um, and I was really excited about it, so I did uh, post it on Twitter. We were thinking it probably to avoid, we'll say, going into the, <laughs> the big crowd. It was kind of more fun to maybe to stand back just by the door. In that picture, we're just behind a pole. There's a few steps down to the main dance floor and the bar is behind us and the door is that we, the entrance is directly behind us. I post my traditional picture in, on Facebook. We took some videos and I remember we said that it was probably one of the best concerts we, we have seen because of the energy at the bands and, and the ambience also of the public. It's au public, des fois, quelqu'un qui fume, qui fume à l'intérieur. Uh, quelqu'un qui a bu trop d'alcool, mais rien de relativement méchant. It's one of the most beautiful venues in Paris. I was probably the third or fourth one to get in and just put myself on the barrier in the middle. It was the first time I was seeing them uh, on stage um, and it was fun. It was very fun until the five or six uh, song where it all began. Parce qu'il y avait, euh, on a vu les vitres euh, tomber, éclater. Tout ce que j'ai ressenti, c'est l'instinct de survie. On, c est, c est, c est, ça, ça pétait dans tous les sens. C'est-à-dire, les vitres du, les vitres ont éclaté. Il euh, y a une personne qui était en train de fumer, qui est tombée. 
Et puis c'était une scène de guerre, quoi, dès le départ. We heard, you know, kind of clack, 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 something very weird. Rentrer dans la salle et, 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 et trouver tout de suite les portes de secours pour retrouver l'extérieur. Parce que nous, c'était était comme un piège, en fait, parce qu'ils les, les, arrivent en face de nous. Nous, il n'y a, a pas d'accès. I felt an arc like this, and I felt hot, like a, a drink spilled on my shoulder. And David was standing behind me, kind of protecting me from getting bashed or moved around in, in, in the concert. And I turned to David, and as I said, did somebody spill their drink? There was flashes, sparks, and the noise of, you know, persistent... Uh, Gunfire. Like gunfire, exactly. That sound wasn't a good sound. But I thought the only way to know is look up and look at the guys on stage. And I saw them looking up all towards the entrance and um, their mouths just went, just dropped. And I could see fear and I knew there was death behind on their faces. That look that they had. I'd seen the silhouette of a man, but at that point, the crowd kind of fell to the side. People were dropping that had been hit at this stage. There was a couple in, just in front of me, and the man definitely dropped. And I believe that maybe what I thought was the drink spilling was his blood hitting me. I, I don't know. As the gunfire never stopped, really, for yeah. what seems like forever. And when we were on the floor, David climbed on top of me to protect me. And it was very apparent. People were dying around us and that there was some sort of massacre happening and yeah. we were part of it. I felt people um, falling, everyone, like dominoes. And my body got um, um, squeezed against the barrier and that's when I tried to jump but I couldn't jump and I realised that my right leg was stuck and I, I knew that's because of the people falling and I tried once and I was just bouncing on that barrier and I, threw, I kept thinking the next one is for you I, my body was ready to, to take a shot at any time. It was the noise, the moaning, and the, well, blood. the blood. We dropped to the floor, and the floor was just filled with blood. I couldn't see my friends. It was still really dark. But I knew that they were on the floor, probably underneath people. And then I could see all those people. It looked like mountains of people and then I look up and I remember seeing the purple lights from the bar with the the bar sign and then just those flash and I knew that was bullets. Comme je connais le Bataclan et je ne pouvais pas la porte était fermée, elle était elle était solide. Et là, dans l'escalier, c'est le moment, euh, malgré ce qui s'est passé à, à, à l'extérieur, pour nous, c'est le plus violent. C'est-à-dire qu'on euh, entendait tout, euh, les escaliers sont serrés, il y a énormément de monde. Donc, arrivé, euh, bon, je réussis à arriver euh, là-haut. Et puis là, le temps il a l'air tellement long, tellement long, tellement long, même moi, je panique. Je savais pourquoi mon leg était stuck, mais c'était parce que les gens étaient juste scared. Or was it because they were dead? This is why I want a fool of asking them, can you please help me? 
I just feel very selfish. I knew, I knew that people were hurt. I could feel people dying. It's, it, people don't believe in spirit and souls and, but no, I, I remember feeling, yeah. You, you could feel people's souls leaving their bodies? Yeah. And yeah, and no, I, I wished I could stop it the whole time. I kept thinking, what could you do to, what could you do? But there was nothing we could do. The lights came on and when they did, it wasn't just, I think that's blood, it's, I'm definitely covered in blood. I'm definitely face down in blood. This is definitely a man that's been shot. This is definitely happening. We can see it now. And I watched as he died really and we were looking at each other and I turned my head and to my right there was a girl who David saw too. Yeah, she was lying and she was motionless and again it was clear that she was dead at that point. We hide ourselves and my, with my brother and each time we just try to stand up to see there is some shooting so you protect yourself. Et là, il y a une dame qui me, qui me, qui me, qui, qui a peur, qui crie, qui, je, donc je me suis repris. Et, euh, et donc là, euh, il y a une trappe euh, qui se trouve euh, en haut. <coughs> donc, euh, on a escaladé avec le régisseur pour, pour ouvrir la trappe, et puis là, on s'est mis à, à soulever tout le monde. I think my first thing to think was just to protect her, you know. Um, shield her, whatever I could do, because, you know, when, when you love someone, you, you want to protect them. And I think that was my initial, like, instinct was to, okay, make sure she's okay, you know. Um, protect her yeah. and save her. There came a point, the shots were getting closer and closer and the floorboards would quake. With each shot, the floor would just vibrate and it felt like it was just beside us and I said to David, this is it, I love you, goodbye. Yeah. Just thought about our families and yeah, just that was it, just kept family. telling you I loved you, I yeah. didn't want you to die hearing the gunfire much like I didn't want that man to die sure. looking at them. And I just kind of looked to my side and I could see there were just black, black sole boots with black leather, I think, and I, he just walked within feet of us. And again, I thought this is the moment he's going to point at us now. And we were the next to be shot. And somehow he just walked by and he didn't turn the gun at us. Puis voilà, moi-même j'ai pu euh, après rejoindre le toit et là je motivais les gens pour que les gens euh, euh, accélèrent, accélèrent. C'était vraiment explosif. It was when I was in front of one terrorist and I was thinking he will kill my brother. And he's communicating with me and asking to close the door and I say, just please no, let my brother come in. How many people escaped through that hatch? I think about 50, something like that, between 40 and 50. When we arrive on the roof, you have a guy with very safe voice just asking, come here, trust in me. I think it's a guy from a, st a staff or safety staff. When we are out, there is an apartment with an escalator. And we managed with the window that is open. And là. Allez, 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 tout le monde, tout le monde. When we saw the two terrorists uh, on the first floor at the other end of the room, 
um, coming to us, we, we tried to escape between the seats on the balcony, but they had seen us, so uh, they start to come and asking us to gather in, uh, in a corner. They said, we are not going to kill you. That's the first word uh, I heard from them, which was uh, bizarre, because everyone in the Bataclan was thinking they're going to kill us. The guy started firing. Uh, I don't know if they saw us or if they, they just managed to reload again. And we both dropped because we knew it wasn't safe. They're firing again. I just saw in my peripheral vision that these doors burst open and I don't know who opened them or how they became open, if someone inside did it, if someone outside had come in. but. I just, I saw them and I said to Katie, we've got to go, we've got to move. So I laid on my stomach and I crawled, uh, wiping the blood with my clothes. But I just, just keep, keep crawling and I was so scared to look behind me. Other people ran with us at that point. Um, I'm not sure how many really, but we, we remember there was dead bodies on the floor and we were almost stumbling to get to the door. and. We ran down, uh, it was, well, when I say ran, we uh, stumbled down, I think it was about three steps, and we were out on the street. I think that's, going outside, that's when maybe for a few seconds I lost it. I, I couldn't breathe, I just hold my head and feel, what is happening, why? I became me again. At this moment, I heard the voice of the third terrorist who was still downstairs and they are talking to each other, the two uh, with their Kalashnikov uh, upstairs on the balcony and the other one uh, downstairs. There was a huge explosion in, in the stage. I think they, um, they understood and that's why they asked us to go with them in the corridor. We were trying to run and I was looking at David. I was ahead of him and I was thinking like, hurry up, come on, you can't. This yeah, sure. isn't the time to kind of sink, let it all sink in and look, we have to keep running. And yeah, I think. He kind of just said to me like, I can't run, I've been shot. Yeah. They took some banknotes out of their pocket, like 50, 50 euro banknotes, and asked uh, one of the hostages, Sebastian, uh, to burn them. At, at this point, I can imagine they wanted to show that um, they had not any interest in life because they were here to die, so they didn't need any banknotes anymore. They closed the windows, we switch off all the things, so TVs, lights, of course, everything, and we, everybody were just hide, you know, on the floor. They're all playing with their smartphone. We spend a lot of time to communicate with friends, people, family, and so on, because all the other who knows we, we are there send text message or call. But I post also a picture on Facebook. So when people realize something happened there, we uh, receive a lot of messaging. They told us that um, we could thank our president because of the, the bombing in Syria and Iraq, and they were from Islamic State. Were they scared? Were they angry? They looked very determined. 
um, maybe they had taken drugs, um, they were doing what they had to do. And I think I said, where? Like, where have you been shot? And he said, your foot. And I was like, right, okay, yeah. I'll drag you, so. I looked down and I could see my shoe was filled with blood and it was pumping out of my foot and I couldn't run any further. And Katie told me we have to keep going. She basically dragged me to safety because at that point I was beginning to almost pass out. They were getting nervous because they wanted the police to stay far from the corridor. There is also silent, big silence. We saw before uh, the uh, final assault some, you know, red lights. So we know that people are on the roof, the snipers on. So we know that policemen are there. Every hostage is very quiet. We didn't uh, talk to each other. Um, the three hostages behind the door, uh, the terrorists were giving orders to these hostages, uh, asking them to listen to what was happening inside the Bataclan. Um, and for the, the six of us that were standing in front of the window, uh, our only action was to look what was happening in front. How many people we are, where we are, if we are safe, if there is injuries, they ask for if we see the explosive belt. The terrorist asked one of the hostages to yell uh, its smartphone number to the police. During this period, they had more or less five or six calls. The terrorists were, were only saying, um, we have hostages, we have explosive belts. If you come too close, we are going to kill the hostages, so stay far. They seem not to have any uh, demand, so it uh, gave more um, impact for me on the fact that they were going to, to kill us. Because there is a lot of shoots and explosions. On entendu des gros boom, des gros boom, des gros boom. The police throws uh, stunned grenades, and uh, at this moment, I um, I fell. I think I was the last hostage, or maybe uh, one of the, of the last. And I can remember precisely of the image of one of the terrorists shooting in one hand, he has his Kalashnikov, and on the other hand, with his finger on the detonator. The so two terrorists are uh, escaping using the stairs and at this moment the police start uh, shooting. Um, I'm still wondering why he didn't uh, trigger his detonator at this moment. If so, we would have all been killed. When the police took us out of the corridor, they said, don't look on what's happening in front of the stage. But uh, it was not uh, easy for us not to give a look. How can you think like that, that walking in and shooting people in the back 
while they're having fun at a concert, you know. It doesn't make any sense to me, and I don't think it makes sense to you either. It's just... Il y a le diable, et il y a après le diable, et eux, ils sont après le diable. How are you sleeping? Not very well. Yeah, not of nightmares. I'm, do, I'm doing that dream every time because I'm, I think my brain is trying to let me see what at that time it protected me from. And every night is the same dream, black background, mountains of body and bullet. I don't feel any anger or hatred. It's just a sadness. I feel sad about everybody that was there, whether the ones shooting or the people who were shot. I just feel very sad and there's no point in being angry, it's done. That film was made by Warwick Harrington and Alessandra Bonomolo.